So it turns out that age is one of the most important risk factors for pain. Uh, and so older adults, uh, by virtue of aging, are at risk for all sorts of disorders where pain is a cardinal symptom. Uh, these include diseases like osteoarthritis, cancer, where pain is a cardinal symptom and often disabling one. Shingles is another common cause of pain in this age group. Um, diabetes as well, epidemic in older adults, largely because of the obesity problem. Older adults are at risk for neuropathic pain from that as well. So for these reasons, uh, physicians and other healthcare providers who see older adults will be seeing large numbers who suffer from pain. We have fairly good data on the short-term effects of our conventional pharmacologic therapies for pain. And these data tell us that Tylenol is modestly effective as a pain reliever for acute and chronic pain in older adults. Uh, the, the results also are very consistent in that non-steroidals are certainly more effective, almost twice as effective as Tylenol as a pain reliever. Um, but I'll talk in just a second about many of the safety issues that make it difficult to use this class of medications. By far the most effective pain reliever for chronic non-cancer pain is opioids, but because of a host of issues, the routine use of opioids for chronic non-cancer pain is problematic. I would say, and I think it's important to, to note, that our understanding of the beneficial effects or the efficacy of these medicines really come from short-term studies. Um, these last anywhere from weeks to several months, and yet we uh, physicians are being asked to treat patients for months to years, and so there really is a lack of evidence about the long-term benefit of many of these medications. And our hope would be that studies will provide results to guide management decisions that clinicians have to make on a daily basis. The real challenge comes from the safety, and we know that these medications all have safety profiles that uh, can cause concern. Tylenol, while considered by far the safest medication and recommended, uh, continues to be recommended as safest medicine, in high quantities uh, is the leading cause of liver failure and liver toxicity in this country, most often coming from unintentional overdose. The non-steroidal medications uh, have been used for many years, and yet they are one of the leading causes of hospitalization, primarily because of kidney failure and also exacerbation of heart failure. We now know that most of the non-steroidals also increase stroke and myocardial infarction risk, and many of them have been removed from the market. The opioids, as I mentioned, while being very effective pain relievers, have their own side effect profiles, which often are deleterious for older adults. They increase predisposed risk for falls. Uh, certainly are constipating, which is already a problem for many of the, the older adults that I take care of routinely in practice. Uh, they can cause cognition changes, and cognitive impairment can already be a problem for many older adults. Um, and are a risk for uh, hospitalization in general. So physicians um, are challenged to use these medications in a safe way, particularly among older adults who may be frail and have multiple chronic illnesses. So I think given the safety concerns of the, the drug approaches, the, there's been increasing attention focused on non-pharmacologic approaches, and I would say that's particularly indicated and appropriate at this time. Uh, what do we know about them? Well, it turns out that, the, that exercise approaches in general have been shown to be pain reducing and certainly can preserve function and are advocated by all major guidelines for the management of pain in older adults. Um, we are looking at other modalities as well, such as cognitive behavioral therapy, where older adults or any person who may uh, undergo this therapy are provided skills, taught skills that are behavioral in nature, things like relaxation, uh, use of visualization, also behavioral approaches to not overdo it in any given time. Um, these techniques also will include often what is called cognitive restructuring, where people are asked to reflect on their attitudes and beliefs about pain, where the idea is that we can modify people's erroneous beliefs about pain and its impact. 
and they have been shown to be very effective in studies. Uh, the trouble with cognitive behavioral therapy in particular is there are very few people who can deliver it. And so we've got an effective therapy and yet the barrier is inadequate ability to deliver the therapy. Um, other therapies that I think are worthy of note and are receiving increasing attention are Tai Chi and yoga, both very appropriate for older populations. I work and provide uh, care in New York City. I'm pleased to report that in New York City that about 80% of all senior centers now offer Tai Chi or yoga. They don't explicitly uh, offer these programs as ways to reduce pain, but I think they should because the data certainly suggests that uh, these therapies can have benefit in terms of pain reduction and certainly improve function and overall quality of life. So the, the, the work that's been done in collaborative care I think is important because what it does is it indicates the value of a team-based approach to pain management. We recognize that these are challenging patients to provide care to. Uh, the collaborative care studies that have been conducted so far indicate that when primary care physicians uh, in concert with a specialist, either a psychologist or a pain specialist, and often a case manager, which is a nurse specialist, come together to address patients with pain problems that positive outcomes occur. So I think the take home message for the collaborative care work that's been done is that when you can, when systems allow for it, think about including the specialist. It may, it may be simply a consultative one, but also to enroll the assistance of either the social worker or the nurse who can help with care coordination. Uh, and provide education, which is often very important. Well, I would say that I, I, I think to, to remain optimistic, uh, to, yes, we recognize their challenges in providing care to these patients, but I think with education and being a cheerleader to uh, and for these patients that positive outcomes can occur, I would also like to add that I think, and this is my experience as a physician who provides primary care to older adults, that um, a, a pearl is to go back and revisit old therapies that may not have worked in the past uh, when delivered by others, but might be effective five and 10 and 20 years down the road. So don't think that a therapy that once didn't work may not provide some benefit. Uh, the other point that I think is worth making is that the standard of care in 2015 remains multimodality, so that simply handing over a pain medication prescription alone is insufficient treatment for the management of chronic pain. We need to be presenting multimodal approaches with particular attention to function for all adults, but particularly older adults who suffer from chronic pain.